Thanks and good morning. All right, so here are my disclosures. Uh, so spinal pelvic conundrum can be uh, distilled into two variables. Spine pelvic attitude, pelvic tilt, and spine pelvis flexibility. Positive pelvic tilt is forward, negative pelvic tilt is backwards. So spine pelvic tilt, so this is basically a scatter of um, your safe zone for pelvic tilt. Uh, so pelvic tilt simply changes the center of your target. So a patient with positive pelvic tilt would have um, a target that's slightly uh, higher aniversion than someone with normal pelvic tilt. Spine pelvis flexibility changes the size of your aniversion target. So a stiff spine will have a more narrow aniversion target while a, a normal spine will have a wider uh, range. So what happens in normal motion? So when you sit, the pelvis rolls back, as Dr. Botner covered, uh, and then when you roll forward, the pelvis helps compensate as well, reducing the range of motion that the, fem the femur needs to rotate. So what happens with a stiff or fused spine? Uh, the pelvis is uh, not rolling uh, and helping the hip um, in all of that range of motion. So this patient here had to um, rotate forward 110 degrees through the hip uh, to sit forward. So here's a spinal pelvic conundrum. So this patient has a stiff spine, negative pelvic tilt, and a hip flexion contracture. negative pelvic tilt there. And you can see that there's not much happening as the patient bends forward. So how can technology help this patient? Um, surgery planning for negative pelvic tilt and stiff spine. So uh, with negative pelvic tilt, what we've got to do instead of uh, plan for just normal aniversion, we can decrease the uh, aniversion to compensate for that negative pelvic tilt. So what we have uh, with hip insight, we, we have an algorithm that corrects for a patient's pelvic tilt. Uh, basically this patient has minus 21 degrees of pelvic tilt where normal is four degrees. So that's 25 degrees of difference. We take a third of that difference and adjust our aniversion targets. So how can technology help this patient? Uh, the technology that I represent is the hip inside system. It consists of uh, a single tray for the anterior tool, a hollow lens, and a computer running our software. So this is what it looks like in surgery. That's the patient's uh, 3D model overlaying the patient and the impactor in its planned orientation. That's its planned antiversion inclination depth as well. Here's a video from a third uh, person perspective of the surgeon just impacting the cup. So that impactor hologram there is in our planned antiversion inclination, so it's really just line it up and impact. So the hip inside planning process, so we start with the CT. The CT is uploaded to us, we create uh, 3D models of the pelvis and femur. We plan component sizing, positioning, adjust for the patient's pelvic tilt, incorporate functional images if there's any of those, and then we upload that back to our website for the surgeon or rep to download uh, and use in surgery. So here's a look at the cup plan and the stem plan. So the cup, you can uh, adjust uh, component sizing or positioning, same with the stem in the OR, however you'd like to do that. Um, and then for leg length and offset, since we know uh, the 3D geometry of the implant. We landmark the tip of the greater trochan or the saddle of the femur, and we have a landmark on um, each implant on the lateral shoulder. The software will give you the distance between those two points in the preoperative plan, and you can measure against that in surgery to find, to find if you're meeting your planned leg length and offset change. So here's the uh, hip and side anterior tool. Again, single tray, 
no disposables, everything just goes through the wash. Uh, the tool has three legs which go on to the patient. Uh, there's uh, the base point leg which goes middle ischium, just inferior of the socket, and then two points that go on each ASIS. So in summary, spinal pelvic conundrum can be simplified into two variables. Pelvic tilt, which affects, uh, affects the antiversion target, and spine pelvis flexibility, which affects the size of your antiversion target. So quantitative patient-specific analysis and planning coupled with enabled technologies, enabling technologies to execute that plan can increase accuracy and simultaneously reduce reliance on x-ray in the OR. Thanks.